when I take a deep breath, oh, I can allow myself to really feel and really feel, how do I feel in this moment? Who am I? Uh, what do I want in my life? What choices do I want to make? Is this something I really want to do? And I think you have to stop. You have to add your mindset um, and your your quiet time, your breath work time, your meditation time to really see how you want to live the rest of your life, um, how you want to be today, how you want to wake up and feel instead of just picking up your phone and allowing that to be the thing. Um, and that's going to rule your day, right? Everyone's always demanding of you and there's you know social media and there's emails and this, but how do you want to feel today and how do you want to take care of yourself and your body? I think that's really, really key. Welcome to another episode of WiseCast, the show that elevates voices, shines the light, showcases the gifts of our heart-centered guests, and amplifies the positive differences they are making in the world. Living a pain-free, ageless life is only possible when we understand the power of creating a harmonious connection with our mindset, emotions, and physical bodies. That is why I am so excited to bring today's guest to you here. She is a leading authority in the field of pain-free living, which includes the power of creating a harmonious connection of mindset, emotions, and body. Respected for her unique approach to transformational movement that merges Pilates, meditation, and mindset, she teaches her clients how to flourish at every stage and age of their lives. Her latest hot new release and best-selling book, Listen, Watch What You Say Your Body Is Listening, is an easy-to-do technique that allows you to connect with your body in deep and lasting ways. My name is Melanie McSally, your host for today's episode, and without further ado, I would like to welcome the beautiful, the amazing, the always joyful, Connie Pantero. Connie comes to us from California in the USA. Melanie, it is so wonderful to talk with you again. I love having conversation. We love to have fun. We love to have joy. And um, that's what it's all about. It's really not movement as a punishment. It's movement because we feel so great in our bodies. We want to move them. They were meant to be moved. And when we do, we feel much better in our lives. Thanks, Connie. So why, as we get older, do we have so much pain in our bodies? So that's so interesting. People ask me that all the time. There are two parts to this. The first part is pain is a gift because that's the only way our body talks to us and we listen to it, right? When we're feeling good, we're like, yay, I'm feeling good. And we go off. But when we have pain, that's when we call the massage therapist, call the doctor, get an acupuncture, go to the chiropractor, uh, talk to your movement professional and say, what can I do about this? So pain is really doing its job and that's to have you deal with whatever issue is at hand. And the other part of this is we don't, as we get older, we tend not to become movers. We tend to sit a lot of the day. So if in your 20s, um, someone would call you at midnight, right? You jump up and go out. Mm, in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, you know what? Someone's calling you. You're not jumping up as quickly. And it's so doing those movements, are you active in your day? Are you getting up from your desk five, every, five minutes every hour? Are you doing certain activities? Are you rotating your body? Are you extending and flexing your body? Are you doing these things? That's really what's going to make a huge difference. It's the movement. It's everything and listening to the pain that makes us um, able to function and feel good as we get older. 
I love the reframing about pain because knowledge is power. As an athlete, we have to learn how to translate the information coming to our brain from the various parts of our body. Is this pain telling me I'm at threshold, aka I've reached my highest potential at this time? Is it telling me I have more to give? Or is it warning me that I'm about to go overboard or even that I've already overdone it and I need to stop before I cause lasting damage? So as I've gotten older, I'd say it takes more effort, more willpower to go about my day. My body creaks and cracks more than it used to, and I'm stiffer. Before I met you, Connie, I might have said, I'm sure it's only going to get worse, but I know you have ways uh, to change that, right? Can you tell our listeners how? So as to the first part, yes, of course, we can change that by moving, by moving our bodies, moving our bodies. So park further away. Okay. Don't take the spot right next to the store. Park further away and all of a sudden now you have those extra steps. So they say that 10,000 is not necessarily the amount of steps you need. But let's say you try to get over your average. So just walk around with an Apple Watch or a Fitbit or whatever, and you'll see that you usually about do about three to 4,000 steps. So now we want to double that. And that means go for a walk in the beginning of the day, end of the day, get up and move, take the stairs. Don't make it so easy for yourself. Carry your groceries and just think of the world as your gym, as opposed to just like, what's the easiest thing? Um, Make a few trips. Don't put five bags on your arm to go into the house. Go take one bag in, come on back, take another bag in, come on back. So make yourself a mover, walk from one end of your house to the other, take the stairs, as I said, go up and down the stairs a couple of times. So you want to see, create how much movement can I have in a day that's really going to make a big difference in my life. Yes. I mean, I can totally feel the difference on the days I don't move versus the days I do. And I can definitely see the difference between my my folks and the other people in their community. I mean, my parents are in their 70s and 80s, and they're very active. Both of them golf, and then my mom goes for walks around the neighborhood. And as a result, they're young for their age. So you talk about movement and breath work, but I know you also believe in mindset and meditation. How does mindset play a role in our health? Why do our words matter? Our words are so important. Think about it. Oh, my balance is terrible. I'm not good. I'm too old. I'm too stupid. I don't know computers. I'm too fat. I can't do that. I've never been able to do that. I have two left feet. I'm awkward. I hate technology. I don't know how to work the clicker for the TV. Someone else does that for me. And so these stories perpetuate our lack, our our inability to do something. And we want to really create a space of learning. You know, kids learn all the time and then we become adults and we are like, we're, we're expected to know everything and there's no way you can know everything. So allow yourself to be a learner, allow yourself to change those words. That's really why I wrote the book, listen, watch what you say, your body is listening because so many of my clients asked me the same questions over and over again. So now as I start to change the language I use, and now I say things like, oh, I'm becoming better at technology every day. I really enjoy doing new things. I love a challenge. I'm making myself healthier every day. I eat healthy foods. I get to go to work. I get to go to the gym. I get to be with my kids, my grandkids, instead of I have to go to work. I mean, doesn't that sound so heavy? Instead of saying, I get to do these things. The change of the words is so so powerful that I think it's really going to switch the way you feel about your life. Absolutely. Attacking life with curiosity allows you to see the wonder of life, the beauty at what is possible. We think because we're older, we know everything. 
that things have to be a certain way, but that's only a belief system. You get what you focus on most. So focus how much your life sucks and it will always suck, but focus on beauty and and the joy of life. And you'll be blessed with the wonder and surprises life has to offer. Okay, so building on the mind, how do you relate what's going on in your minds or in our minds with our bodies? So mindfulness and meditation and breath work are are so important, as important uh, as movement. And I really call it the three M's, mindset, movement, meditation. And I have added breath work because breath work and meditation to me kind of go hand in hand because it makes you think outside of the box, right? And think of yourself as a whole human. So I always try to tell you or the my clients of a wheel, right? So think of yourself right in the middle. You're the spoke in the middle of that wheel. And we want to try to keep you, it's not equal because it's never going to be equal. There's no real balance in life, right? Certain things take over, over other things, but we want you to have certain qualities. So we want you to become a mover. We want you to wake up or have some time during the day where you have quiet, where you are just sitting with yourself, breathing, uh, either hearing beautiful music, you can do a mantra. I like breath work. And that brings you back into the center of who you are and what's really important to you. Um, and I think we get so lost in everything because the world is busy, right? We've got a lot coming out at us. And so sometimes, I mean, that's why we lift our shoulders, right? We're always in protection mode and this is in our DNA. And so when we drop our shoulders, whew, I have a little space when I take a deep breath. I can allow myself to really feel and really feel. How do I feel in this moment? Who am I? Uh, What do I want my life? What choices do I want to make? Is this something I really want to do? And I think you have to stop. You have to add your mindset. Um, and your your quiet time, your breath work time, your meditation time to really see how you want to live the rest of your life, um, how you want to be today, how you want to wake up and feel instead of just picking up your phone and allowing that to be the thing. Um, and that's going to rule your day, right? Everyone's always demanding of you and there's you know social media and there's emails and this, but how do you want to feel today and how do you want to take care of yourself and your body? I think that's really, really key. I love how you connect all the dots. How we're feeling in our body impacts our thoughts and what we're thinking impacts how we feel in our body. I know for me, the difference between responding versus reacting is all about taking a breath and grounding myself before taking that action. And that action can be the difference between perpetuating negative or challenging energy or transmuting that energy into something peaceful and compassionate. When I think about the value of grounding, I think about being present. When you hear the words be present, what does that mean to you? And so being present to me, those words mean that I'm really here. You know, I have clients come in for classes or on Zoom and they're, you know, rushing or running late and they're like, here, okay. And you can just see their minds. It's a billion different things going on. And so back to the breath, taking a deep breath in, settling yourself and really being here for the exercise, for the conversation, to be with another person, to be... um, present, and we say that word a lot, I'll say that word a lot, but to really be here is a big thing. I think when you're really present with yourself, you know what your body needs. Uh, At least you can tune in, you can journal, you can ask questions of yourself, but it's so important to say, can I take the time to tune into who I am 
in this moment, what I need. Is this good for my body? Is this good for my brain? These are questions you need to ask that are going to help you as you get older, um, your body always wants to um, do the right thing by you and to accomplish what you want it to accomplish. And when you feed it healthy food and when you do nourishing things, things that you love that excite you, when you move your body, when you breathe and live into whatever you need to, if you're in pain, if you deal with that, I think you really have a very beautiful life, a vibrant, joyful, beautiful life. And that's really, I think, what we're all searching for. Absolutely, Connie. Beautifully said. The relationship with self is so important. You wouldn't ignore the people you care about most in life and then expect those relationships to thrive. So why would you ignore the being on the other side of the most lasting, and I would argue, important relationship of your life. You heard it here, people. The key to living a joyful life in harmony with yourself is to listen. Listen to what your body is saying and cherish that relationship. You heard it here, people. The key to living a joyful life in harmony with yourself is to listen. Listen to what your body is saying and cherish that relationship. I also love the theme throughout your wisdom that you've shared with us here today, Connie, which is that life is not meant to be a punishment and your body is here to love and support you and be your best friend. So when you build fun, joy, and laughter into every day, not only will it uplift you mentally and emotionally, but it will also uplift you physically. Honey, you have a great way for people to bring joy into every day. I absolutely love the videos that you send me every day. You truly have the best videos. I love how you take videos everywhere. I mean, I've seen videos of you dancing in the mall, jumping into the pool with a watermelon, using a broom as a microphone. You make me smile every time I turn on a video. I have no idea what to expect when I open each one, and I love it. Those two minute videos alone that come every single day to my phone are the joy of my day. But I know that's not all you offer. Your app is stock full of types of movement, meditation, mindfulness, and breath work videos. Some super short, some long, everything in between. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, your new course that's modeled after your best-selling hot and release book is also in there, right? Yeah, there's so much in the app. That's what I love about it. From the free videos to the classes that I have to my listen, my masterclass, listen, watch what you say, your body is listening. And here you can buy the 10 weeks and just do it yourself, or you can join me and we get together weekly in a group uh, session and we do some exercise. We have conversation about what we're ready to get rid of, what we want to bring on in our lives, how we can get stronger and the limitations. And then we'll do some breath work, some meditation, and really dive deep, drop deep into the body, into our true nature, and allow ourselves to change and, and see our life, first of all, for the perfection that they are, even in chronic pain, even in a disease, even in things not working out quite right, how we can change that by changing our mindset and by changing how we look at the world. All of that is in the masterclass. And then when you come join me, so it's it's really fun. I get to, we get to work together. Um, and I love Zoom for that. I, re I really, really do. So there's so much juicy stuff in the app. Come join me, come play. And as always, how can we make your body better? How can we have more fun? How can we elevate our life and just realize that we are what we're looking for? The answer is not out there. We don't have to be thinner, taller, richer, anything. We have to just accept and love who we are. And from that, everything grows, everything changes. And it's finding the joy in everyday moments. 
that makes it really special and makes this a fantastic life to live. So I thank you so much. What a gift you are. Love the podcast. And um, as always, let's remember, oh, life is a gift. Joy is the juice of life freshly squeezed. How are you going to drink it in? Thank you. Okay, listeners, if you want to look as good as Connie does in your 50s and 60s and beyond, I highly suggest you download her app, log in, and start filling your day with joyful moments. There's a ton of free content in there. And if you're inspired, you can also sign up to take her course and uh, add on group coaching, or she even offers private coaching. Thank you, Connie. It has been such a joy and honor having your bubbly self here today, listening to your wisdom and experiencing your passion to bring more joy into people's lives. I want to thank our listeners for tuning in. If you like what you heard here today, please do like, share, and comment. We are trying to get Wisecast to be a hot new release. So if you feel inspired, if you felt moved, if you felt called, if we earned it, please do like, share, and comment. It is free for you to do so. It really helps the podcast grow, and we really do love your engagement. This was another episode of Wisecast, the show that elevates the voices, shines the light, showcases the gifts of our heart-centered guests, and amplifies the positive difference they're making in the world. If you want to learn more about WiseCast, you can visit our website at wisecast.com. We drop 10 episodes every month on the 21st, so you can binge watch or spread them out over the month, whatever suits your mood and lifestyle. Once again, my name is Melanie. It has been my pleasure being your host today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your engagement. And I invite you to come back and join me once again for our next episode of Wisecast.